we're gonna make a little squash gratin. And I have a butternut squash. You could do this with really any squash. There's a couple things to know about it, a couple things that'll make your life easier. You want a nice, heavy knife when you're working with squash. And with the butternuts, I am just gonna make sure to cut right here where it gets a little bulbous. Just to make it easier to work with. And I'll cut the tip off. Then the next part, we're gonna peel the squash. So, of course, you can go down with a knife and go kind of like that, but you're probably gonna lose a little bit more squash. I wanna get as much yield as possible out of this guy. It's about a three pound squash. It should feed about six or seven people. But I just peel them. I try to get down into the golden part. You're gonna see some green lines. Those are just part of the skin. You wanna get underneath the green. So we're just trying to really reveal the golden part of the squash. Remove the seeds. And we'll go ahead and peel this guy too. A little gratana squash is a great side dish for a couple reasons. You can bake it ahead. Everybody likes baked squash. And it's a great way to go through a lot of squash. Because I know once fall comes around, a lot of people are trying to make gifts out of squash by hiding them in your car. So our squash are all peeled. Now it's time to build the gratin. So I have an eight inch cast iron pan for about a three pound squash. But this is something where you can really, you can just kind of eyeball it. And as long as you have a pan that's a couple inches deep, that could be a cake pan or a brownie pan, a casserole dish, really anything you got you can use. And it doesn't have to be totally exact because squash are not exactly uniform. Take a knob of butter. And I'll rub the inside of the little butter. The next most important thing you're gonna need for a little squash gratin is a mandolin. It's a really, really important tool in the kitchen. Basically, it's like the ultimate slicer. You need to respect the mandolin too. Another name for them in the kitchen is the finger taker because this blade is really sharp. So you need to be slow and you need to be sure when you're making cuts with a mandolin. Otherwise things can get a little messy. So I'll take my squash. It doesn't really matter which part you use first and I'm gonna start slicing. And I have the mandolin here. That's probably about an eighth of an inch. Pretty thin. And nice and slow. Must respect the mandolin. There's no rush when you're doing this. When you get down there, you're gonna have some nubs like this. One thing that can help and some mandolins will have a guard, you can just use a little towel. You can really get down there by using the towel to protect your fingers. And then at the very end, then maybe I'll just take my knife and get slices as thin as possible. There's really no wrong way to do it. So then, I'm just gonna take some of my squash and I'm gonna start making layers. I'll do a couple more just so I can cover the whole bottom of the pan once.
And when I've covered the bottom of the pan, I'm gonna give it a little sprinkle of salt, just a little bit. A little sprinkle of fresh thyme. And then I'm gonna sprinkle on a little bit of goat cheese. For one three pound squash, we're probably gonna want one of the little packets of goat cheese, about four ounces. Now, all we do is we just keep repeating what we are doing. Slice squash, salt, a little bit of pepper, a little fresh thyme, a little goat cheese, and we keep repeating and repeating and repeating and repeating until we fill up the pan. Another layer of squash, pinch of salt, pinch of fresh thyme, couple nubs of goat cheese. When I'm building the gratin, to make sure that I can get as much squash in there as possible, I like to really press them down. So now we only got a little bit of squash left, so it's time to put on the final layer. All right, we got our squash all cut up. And now it's just about time to put it into the oven. So if I put the squash gratin in just like this, the squash would dry out and the top could really get kind of dry and chewy and we wouldn't want that to happen. So what I've done is I made a little streusel out of pumpkin seeds. So again, kind of reinforcing using the whole squash and every part of it. Pumpkin seeds, flour, oats, a little bit of butter, a couple scrapes of nutmeg, it's pretty easy and you can make it ahead of time. But what this is gonna do, it's gonna add a little bit of crunch to the top, but it's also gonna insulate the squash and it's gonna hold all that moisture in so that none of the top dries out and gets crunchy. So I just take the streusel, sprinkle that on top. With your squash shoots, you kind of need to use a little bit of instinct and figure out where are they tender. I'll usually trim them to about four inches. And it's kind of personal preference, but again, you use your intuition, bend them a little bit, see where they're gonna be tender. And the big floppy leaves, I usually like to trim those off, but it's just personal preference. Once you taste a couple, you'll understand it's really not that difficult and not much different from cooking asparagus. To go along with our squash gratin, I cooked a little rack of lamb. And I'm gonna let the rack of lamb rest for a couple minutes. And in that same pan, I'm just gonna take the squash shoots and throw them right in. And the squash shoots the one thing to really know about them is that they cook super, super fast. So I could almost turn the pan off and throw the squash shoots in the pan and they'll just cook with the residual heat. So real quick, put the squash shoots in the pan. Give them a little toss. And then I'm just gonna start plating because by the time I plate, the squash shoots are gonna be done. And a nice big scoop of our squash gratin. A little bit of some cranberry, just a little something acidic. The so squash gratin's pretty rich, so we want something to help kind of cut through that like a knife. Something a little acidic, a little bright. A 
with my rack of lamb, what I like to do for a really nice presentation, I'll just give it a little slice. Yeah, perfect. I like my lamb about medium. I'll cut two bone pieces, and then for each portion, I'll kind of lock them together. A little chef trick there. We'll stand that guy up for a really kind of elegant look. Give that plate a lot of volume. Then, last but not least, a couple squash shoots. Now I gotta have a bite. There's all kinds of stuff going on. You got a little bit of crispy, you got the sweet of the squash, the richness of the meat, the kind of verdant green of the squash shoots, and then the bright acid of the cranberries that helps us cut through everything. It's almost like eating a landscape. Food of the story tastes so much better.